Hello and welcome to Get It Right. And as always, this is where we get you educated by our very well enabled and well knowledgeable experts. And today we have a crop pathologist uh, who has worked with farmers for around five years and is well uh, familiar with matters to do with agriculture and how you can be able to engage in a very profitable way. Today it's all about capsicum farming. So stay right there and get to learn more. I've involved myself with the whole wide array of uh, different crops, uh, but my message, no matter the crop, be tomatoes, be the capsicum, be the chilies, my message has always been on the agribusiness point of the farming bit of it. Because uh, a lot of people, not even a lot of people, actually anyone now in Kenya is getting into farming, the number one thing that is normally in their mind is on profit generation. But the thing that they normally forget is for you to get to make that profit at the farm, you have to have a very keen knowledge, keen interest. You have to have a very good knowledge. You have to have that expert point of view of it. And that is what we call agriculture. I'll be taking you to the greenhouses where we have done our production and uh, also where we are trying to fulfill a number of strategies. And some of these strategies I'll be showing to you something like consistency in production. Uh, most farmers miss on consistency and it's a strategy you are trying out here. So far so good, it's working for us well. Karibuni, let's go to the greenhouses, you see our produce. Uh, when we look uh, at crops, crops are normally differentiated depending on variety. When we come to capsicums, capsicums belong to a family we call the solanaceous crops, where we have the tomatoes, the chilies, the managu, all in the same family. When we come to why capsicums, the indeterminate variety now that we do in the greenhouse, why they can't be done in the open field, number one reason is on quality. And the reason is uh, we look now into pollination. If you try and do the colored capsicum, I'll give you an example, the yellow, the red that are more popular in the market. When you try and do them in the open field with the green ones, there'll be a lot of challenges on, po uh, on the pollination aspect of it. It will come the time when you are harvesting, you are going to harvest your yellow, you find it, it has different shades of color because of different po pollinating agents. You'll find your yellow looking almost like a rainbow. And when it comes to the market, nobody will be able to buy such a produce. Tell us more about uh, the greenhouse and some of the parameters that it had to meet uh, for it to provide the required environment for the type of crop you've uh, planted here. When it comes to farming, farming is, uh, we divide farming into two ways. There's agriculture and there's agribusiness. What has happened over time, most people tend to confuse in between the two. The, much as they are related, there's a big difference between them. When you look at agriculture, agriculture, even a simple explanation, a simple definition, normally talks about the rearing of crops or animals at the farm. Then when we talk about agribusiness, agribusiness now talks about turning these crops or these animals into some sort of income or profit for, for yourself at the farm. And when we, before you get to that agriculture and before you get to that agribusiness, for you to be successful into farming, you have to differentiate between, of the, uh, between the two of them. You have to perfect in each of them. You have to know what do I want to do? Which crop do I want to do? Which crop do I want to grow? And why do I want to grow it? Capsicums are among those crops that make sense. You don't need such a big space of land for you to realize any meaningful profit. Just a small area is enough. But at the same time, when you look at which variety of capsicums are we talking about, the colored and the green capsicums tend to be different. The green capsicums, again, share a totally different agribusiness mathematics from the colored one. For the green ones, you need at least half an acre for you to realize any meaningful profit. But for this colored capsicum, like this greenhouse that we are inside here, it's an 8 by 30 greenhouse. And when you do the calculation of 8 by 30, it's about 240 meters squared. That is about 20 times less of half an acre. So there's that difference. You have to think about the size of land I have, what crop do I want to grow, which crop will make me realize more profit margins. 
Soil test is very important and most farmers dismiss it on different angles and the most excuses that farmers have always been telling me, uh, number one is, I know this land, my soil is very fertile. Then the other one is, soil test is very expensive and that is the first thing when you do a chemical analysis of our soil, that is the first thing that you are supposed to check for, what is the pH. And when you talk about pH, uh, Susan is just simply something we define as acidity or the alkalinity of a substance. The same way for a soil, it's the acidity of that soil or the alkalinity of that soil. Most food, food crops, be it the capsicum, be it the cabbages, be it the wort, require a certain acidity and they prefer a range between 5.5 to a 7.0. And if your soil is acidic, the crop is unable to grow its root, you know, as in buns, and uh, root, we compare the root more of something like the end of a crop. It's the one that reaches out for food. So as this root tries to reach out for food, gets that acidic environment, doesn't extend. It's unable to absorb the most important nutrients. Then number two, you are able to look, when you do a soil test, you are able to know how is my nutrient composition? You are able to do a soil test. You are able to see them. We have the macronutrients. We have the micronutrients. The most important elements and those, uh, yes, they are important, but not that essential, but still important for the crop. We have the NPK, nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potassium. Nitrogen is the, the first nitrogen, is what we need for, if you look at this, the foliage, the vegetative growth aspect of it. Potassium is what we need for something like this flowering, needs potassium. Phosphorus is what we need for the root formation. So the number one thing after farmers farmer has done their soil test and be able to see the components how, in terms of percentage how they are. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. I'll give you an example of this farm. The nitrogen was low, the phosphorus was low, the potassium was okay. If we had grown our crops without doing a soil test, it means the phosphorus that is needed for root formation that is not enough would have affected the root growth of our crops. The roots won't have established themselves well. We'll face an issue on, for example, the crop establishment would have had a lot of issues in terms of crops not just catching up well, crops dying, you're wondering what is happening. But after knowing that, we were able to correct it. We were able to grow our crops using a phosphorus-based fertilizer. Then uh, another thing, uh, this is black cotton. We have black cotton soil here, and there are those characteristics of soils. Black cotton, be it in Machakos, be it here in Isinia, where we are in Kajado County, be it in Mwea, be it where, all of them tend to have low nitrogen component. And that's why even when you observe, even those farmers that we, who happen to be our viewers today, and they tend to have black cotton soil and they walk around their farm, they'll be able to see most of their crops, even the weeds, the grass, they tend not to have this deep green color. They have some shades of yellow. And when you have shades of yellow on your leaves, the first thing that is normally affected is photosynthesis. When a crop is yellow, it means that green coloring matter, that chlorophyll is already affected. And when the food is not, is not made well by that crop, definitely you don't expect your produce to be well. Then the last one, potassium. Potassium is needed for now the flowering and the fruit set. When your potassium, if you do a soil test and you are able to see your potassium is low, like for our case, if our potassium is okay, but had we done and saw our potassium is low, uh, there are those correction measures we would have taken. We would have used foliar feeds, we would have used uh, pro uh, products that are fertilizers that have uh, some potassium rich and be able to just make sure the crop doesn't lack anything. If you find your soil is acidic, do some liming by the recommended quantities. If you find your soil is alkaline, use some elemental sulfur, use some gypsum, and also some, there are these we call the as, as acidic-based fertilizers, something like urea. Create an environment, that cage I'm telling you about whereby you put our pets is the same way for a crop, it's that soil now within that area. Create a conducive environment for that crop to be able to thrive. For you to choose what infrastructure you need for your farm, it's normally informed by different decisions. Uh, number one is like uh, we had talked earlier about is uh, the capsicums, why the colored capsicums must be done in a greenhouse. You can't do it in an open field at all. And that's why we had to build this greenhouse, which is uh, by measurement, the standard measurement of a greenhouse is 8 by 30. 
this is the standard measurement. And when we look, ab uh, when we talk about greenhouses, uh, the first thing a lot of people have actually got into greenhouse farming, but I've tend to see as I go around, even along just this route as you come towards Isenia, you will find uh, a number of greenhouses that have been abandoned. And the reason is uh, this whoever was building this greenhouse had that you know there's that commitment and to build this greenhouse and to do this uh, type of farming and to do uh, some sort of agribusiness but some months or years down the line they, you find someone are burning the greenhouse because of ABCD there's that maintenance aspect of it in Asal areas the weather tends to be very harsh the wind you know it's a place actually doesn't rain very much but when it decides to rain it rains so much the sun is so hot, the wind is so much, at night it gets so cold. So in such type of environment, in such type of regions, it's always important to also think about protecting some of your crops. And that's why, even if it wasn't the capsicums inside here, white, be it the tomatoes, be it the chilies, it's important for such areas to consider about that protected environment for, for them. Then when we come to now the maintenance aspect, you have to consider a lot of things. In Asal areas, the wind tends to destroy the polythin a lot. You have to reinforce the greenhouse very well just to protect it. Like ours, we have reinforced with some steel cables. At the same time, we are planning to plant some banana trees just around to break the wind. That brings us to the end of our first part. We're going to be taking a short commercial break, but don't go too far because once we come back, Avonis will be taking us to the second greenhouse where the crop is ready for the market. When we come to greenhouses, we have two different types of greenhouses. We have the wooden structure and we have the steel, like uh, this one of ours is a steel structured greenhouse. The difference in both of them, it's more of affordability. Can I manage the steel or can I manage the wooden one? But when it comes to the steel tends to, durability tends to last more longer. And in most, um, still on such regions, these are sal areas, you find they tend to have a lot of termites. And these termites, when you do a wooden one, won't last for a very long time. And uh, when you look at the costs, uh, it will be around just about 350,000. That is a standard eight by 30 greenhouse. And for those ones who may consider a wooden one, a wooden one comes to around 150,000. And when you talk about that 350 or that 150,000, includes the polythene, includes the steel, includes the wood, at the same time includes the irrigation system. Here we have two varieties. Uh, we, have the, we have the red variety and we have the yellow variety. 60% of the population is red and 40% uh, is the yellow. The reason is because of our market. Our, you know, every market has its own dynamic. For our market dynamic, red tends to sell more. For every project, there's, uh, like this project you're seeing here, there's that phase that we call the setup phase. And in the setup phase, there are a number of activities that normally can come in. The first one, if you can see here, we have prepared beds. And there's a reason for that, why we did the beds and why was it on the, not on the flat surface. Now, number one, importance of beds is uh, when you talk about beds, there's good drainage. There's good drainage and uh, the reason is uh, this drip irrigation tends to have better drainage when it's raised on a bed than on a flat surface. Then the other reason is the, our root structure tend to have, there are some roots that are emerging a little bit. Our root structures tend to have very good aeration. So you'll find we are able to deal some fungal infection like the damping off. Uh, we are able to deal with such fungal infection because whatever little moisture that tends to clog itself within that root structure, there's good aeration that is able to enable very good evapotranspiration. For the beds depends with uh, the size of the greenhouse. For, for ours, we have done a standard one. Uh, the bed is about 80, 80 in terms of its width. Then the pathway, the pathway now, this uh, Ninjia, this pathway that we are walking through is 40 meters. 
for our capsicum the recommended spacing like for from one row this is a row and this is another row from one row to the other row we normally recommend 60 centimeters then from one crop to the other from one crop to the other is between 30 centimeters to 45 centimeters for us we have used 45 centimeters uh, using 30 centimeters is still okay and the reason is our crop uh, doesn't grow wide it grows upwards the difference between the 30 and 45 centimeters is informed by how do you want to prune it do you want to do a thorough pruning do you want to there are those who leave about four four stems and there are those who leave three and that one can have smaller spacing but that one that will have more number of stems should have a little bit wider spacing the next thing that you normally do before planting always tend to think about doing what we call drenching. Drenching simply means treating this soil, trying to prevent some of the fungal infection. When you come grow your seedling here, you are able to let it thrive with nothing disturbing it. Drenching and uh, the process of doing drenching, you release some water. Before you plant, you release some water to flow within the beds. Then now come with your drenching chemical. You can use carbendazim, you can use, uh, you can use a copper-based fungicide. Where you know you are going to grow your crop, spray there with your pump. And that wetness, that moisture is able to make that chemical travel within the soil area and kill whatever harmful that may affect your seedling. Seedlings can come in different ways. You can buy your own seeds. Yeah, you decide to propagate, you can buy the seeds, send to someone, uh, a professional propagator, or you can buy ready seedlings. Ready seedlings are a little bit expensive for those farmers who love economics like me. But when you tend to buy seeds and take to a propagator, a professional propagator, that cost tends to be cheaper. It's the same thing that we did here. We bought seeds, uh, blocky, we got blocky at about 8 shillings then paid the propagator two shillings, coming to a total of 20 shillings. But had we bought the blocky seedling itself, it will be 20 shillings. Saved almost half of that cost. After you take to them, it takes about one month, uh, that is four weeks. But to work on, because uh, also capsicum in terms of that germination, breaking dormancy it takes uh, quite some time. After the six weeks, you'll find your seedlings are now ready to plant, bring it to the farm, do that recommended spacing that I've talked about. For growing, uh, there's no a lot of technicality when it comes to growing your crop. After that, now we enter into the other phase, and that is the crop management phase, the most important aspect. And you have to, first of all, be able to know your risks. What are, what are the type of risks I'm going to face? And for crop risks, the number one risk for crop normally is the pests. The other risk is normally comes in form of diseases and the last risk normally comes in form of nutrition deficiencies. For capsicum, they are affected with a lot of, uh, a lot of pests. It's a wide range of pests. We, we have caterpillars, if you can see here. This is a caterpillar burrowing into our leaves, leaving these marks. Uh, we have white flies. White flies normally cause some yellowish, yellowish. As they tend to suck the sap, they affect chlorophyll and that's why you see some leaves tend to turn yellowish in color. The biggest risk any farmer growing capsicum should know are the thrips. I don't know if we still have some, we had a few weeks back. And uh, why I'm saying they are the biggest risk is because the number one effect they normally cause is flower and fruit abortion. You can see, if you can see here, a lot of our flowers have aborted. And you see, when we talk about flower abortion, for every flower, like this flower that has fallen down, this was a potential fruit for us, so it's already a loss. There are a lot of fungal infections that normally affect this type of crops. We, we have botrytis, we have anthracnose, we have blight, we have downy mildew, but the number one biggest risk is called powdery mildew. Any capsicum farmer should be able to know that. And the reason why I'm saying powdery mildew is the biggest risk it, it tends to affect leaves. And when it affects the leaves, also affects photosynthesis of that crop. After some time, it, it kills the leaves, the leaves fall down. The more a crop loses its leaves, it's the more the crop loses its potential in terms of the photosynthesis we are talking about. So the other disease is uh, Fusarium wilt. 
and Fusaria wilt in most cases it's a fungal infection sadly doesn't have any cure they tend to come from continuous growth of the same family the solanaceous that we are talking about the capsicum the chilies the tomatoes you can remove capsicums here come back and grow some managu or some tomatoes they'll be uh, exposed to risks of fusarium wilt. Fusarium wilt has no cure. Nutrition is very important because uh, we are talking about crop being a living thing and just like any other living thing, a crop has to eat. When you talk about the basal fertilizers, the fertilizers that we apply in the soil like this one, there are some traces here you can see. This is the heavy meal for the crop. Farmers should note that a lot of stomatas are normally on the underside of the leaf. So when you are applying foliar feed, tend to concentrate more on the lower side than the upper side for it to be absorbed more effectively. Uh, foliar feeds tend to be used depending on a stage of a crop. If it's nitrogen, you use it on onset as the crop is growing. If it's potassium, like at the stage we are now, uh, the, we are using potassium and the reason is we need potassium for flowering and for the food set. For this greenhouse, the variety we are growing uh, is the yellow, as you can see here. Then we also have the red variety. For here we did about 50 to 50 percent population. For now, weekly harvesting, we are doing an, an average of about 200 kilos. Uh, going for a price minimum 100 shillings per kilo, maximum at 140 shillings per kilo. There are those practices we normally do, like washing the pump thoroughly, spraying effectively. And if you don't spray effectively, actually you'll be unable to deal with a number of these issues that you are talking about. Then at the same time, whoever is spraying at the farm should be able, most of these chemicals are health hazardous. So it's important also at the farm to have some of this uh, safety gear, like the mask, you see for a greenhouse is an enclosed area. If someone sprays without the mask, they tend to put their respiratory system at risk. We should be able to do what we call pruning. And the effective way of pruning, we have the main stem, if you can just show here. We have the main stem, you one should be able to leave is three or four of these. I took my agricultural degree uh, in Nairobi University, majored on crop pathology. And why I was able to choose whatever I'm doing right now for this is the fifth year actually is because I learned about the lot of opportunities that this field has to offer. To learn more of what I do, of uh, people that have inspired, uh, you can follow my page, my Shamba in Facebook, my Shamba in Twitter, and my Shamba in Instagram. That brings us to the end of our episode today on Get It Right and I believe that you've learned quite a lot today with Vonis on Koba on how you can be able to grow capsicums in a successful way, carrying out a soil test, getting a variety that will thrive in your ecological zone. As of now, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe at Farm Kenya, where you get to watch these episodes all over again once they are uploaded. But until next time, it's bye-bye from us.